In a synchronous sequential system approach, all the memory elements in the system are simultaneously updated using a globally distributed periodic synchronization signal, also called as a clock signal. But these clock signals are not always ideal. The non-ideality of these clock signals result into two types of problems called as skew and jitter. And these skew and jitter cause lack of predictability of the clock arrival. And that try, give, gives rises to the uncertainty of clock. That's why they are called as uh, clock uncertainties. So if you want to look at the sources of clock skew and uh, clock jitter, a clock is generated from a crystal oscillator, which is off chip and distributed through a network called as clock tree, consisting of uh, PLLs, which are phase lock loops, and buffers and inverters in its uh, network. So a perfect clock is defined as a periodic signal that simultaneously triggers various memory elements on the chip. But due to a variety of process and environmental variations, this clock signal will not be ideal. So in this video, we are going to analyze the impact of spatial variations of clock signal called as clock skew and the temporal variation of the clock signal, which is also called as clock jitter. So what is clock skew? The difference in arrival time of the clock edge at clock pins of different sequential elements is called as clock skew. So if you consider two clocks, clock one and clock two, and uh, consider this figure of reg to reg path and clock one, uh, assume that clock one is coming to this first flip flop and clock two is going to the second flip flop. We consider that the clock goes to both of these uh, clock pins of these flip flops simultaneously, but this may not be the case, right? Because of the variations in um, delay in this path and this path, or may, maybe many other reasons. We'll look at what are the other reasons why it can happen. It may not reach, the clock may not reach, the clock edge may not reach here simultaneously, here and here. So there, there will be some uh, difference in that time of this clock edge reaching these pins. So this is called as clock skew. A clock skew can be between the same clock, which is called as intra clock. Okay, it it is it can be between the same clock at different uh, uh, pins, different uh, sequential elements. That's one uh, case. Or clock skew can be between different synchronous clocks, uh, which are completely different. Okay, it need not be of this uh, from the same clock, but those clocks should be a synchronous clocks, right? So it need not be always for the same. A clock signal we are defining uh, the clock skew and uh, clock skew can be positive or negative what, what do we mean by clock skew is positive when we say clock skew is positive um, it means to the launch flip-flop it is arriving first and capture flip-flop it is getting delayed by some amount so if you look at this if this is clock one I'm defining and if this is clock two then this uh, diagram can be told uh, that it is a positive skew okay because the clock 2 is going to the capture flip flop and it is getting delayed by some amount so this is a positive skew if it has to be a negative skew then uh, the clock 1 has to be delayed so at the capture flip flop clock is arriving first and launch flip flop clock is arriving late that is actually called as a negative skew so this is the two types of uh, skew and uh, there are cases where uh, the clock skew is defined as global and local so a local clock skew is nothing but uh, the sequential elements of the same block or a same su sub block or a uh, same domain is usually told uh, a local clock skew in the integrated circuit design and a global clock skew two big blocks of the chip if they have some skew in between so that is defined as a global clock skew so a global cl clock skew is not uh, that important so reasons for clock skew <laughs> various parallel parts of clock network may not have the same clock delay right if if you consider the same picture so the clock path of this uh, launch flip-flop may not have the same delay as the um, clock path of this capture flip-flop right so this has a longer uh, wire 
so it may have more RC delay and the flip uh, this uh, inverter delay or the buffer delay right so this may give rise to difference uh, in arrival time that's one reason and the second reason is coupling capacitance for one path and the other path may not have the same coupling capacitance which is which results in crosstalk and delta delay so because of this also we will have uh, variations in arrival time of the clock and the third is the process voltage and temperature variations right so process variations may be some uh, wire is made as a thin wire compared to this wire so one of these wires right the parallel wires even though we give the same specifications during manufacturing some problems may happen that's it. that's process variation and the voltage variations also can happen because of many other considerations right so temperature variations so these are the um on chip variations due to these also we will have problems related to clock skew and the causes of clock skew what it results to one is the lack of predictability of the clock edge arrival we are not sure when the clock is uh, going to arrive right because there will be some <clears throat> delay uh, difference and the second is setup and hold time violations right so these violations will be happening because clock itself is coming late so if you consider the equation of um, the setup check this is how we do the setup check right the t flip flop the this uh, data t flip flop delay which is the flip flop delay itself and the t combinational delay which is totally the data path delay right this total data path delay should be less than t cycle minus t setup this was the original equation if we consider a clock to be ideal which is uh, when i say ideal the clock is arriving simultaneously to this flip flop and this flip flop uh, clock pins but if it is not arriving simultaneously then we will add this clock skew to this thing so which means you see um, for this equation this equation gives the maximum limit uh, right for the uh, uh, the propagation delay if you uh, you can go through my one of my video of setup and uh, hold checks that I have explained it properly um, so so this gives a maximum limit for uh, the propagation delay so this uh, which means the this path the data path delay shouldn't be more than this value so it should be less than t cycle minus t setup but adding to this value t skew is an advantage for setup time the positive skew helps the setup time positive skew in the sense the clock is arriving late to this capture flip flop but negative skew is a problem to the clock skew sorry the setup time because if it is negative the clock if the clock skew is negative then this maximum limit is reduced so if uh, the person is saying come to my office before four o'clock he will be saying come to my office before three o'clock so the time is reduced at the same time the positive skew as the positive skew is helping the setup time it's it will not help the whole time because whole time gives a minimum limit on the propagation delay so t flip flop plus t combinational should be greater than the t hold right so again when t skew is added so it should be greater than a greater value which is a problem which is a bad thing so as a as opposite to setup time the whole time for whole time the skew the positive skew is bad and the negative skew is good if the skew is zero it would be better right but it is not the case that we always want uh, a zero skew in the entire chip because millions of uh, sequential elements switching simultaneously results in a hot spot a very high dissipation of heat which may cause the chip to break down so there is always some kind of skew maintained between uh, different blocks and uh, different uh, different sequential elements and this is how the design of clock uh, tree happens so next is jitter jitter is the undesired variation in uh, periodicity of the clock and jitter can be measured and characterized in number of different ways and it's a zero mean uh, random variable when i say zero mean random variable it means it is uniformly distributed uh, on uh, its um, limits right so 
there can be two types of jitter one is absolute jitter uh, which uh, refers to the worst case variation of a clock edge at a given location with respect to an ideally periodic reference clock okay so what do we mean by that if you take a take into consideration a clock edge like this okay this uh, assume that this is ideal and uh, there will be variations uh, of this clock edge we are not sure that it's going to occur at this time only so it may occur at uh, this time also and it may occur uh, before also this uh, the worst case variation of this clock edge with respect to this reference assume this as a reference then uh, fr from this reference how much variation can happen that is actually called as absolute jitter on both sides okay and the second type in which we can measure is called as clock cycle to cycle uh, jitter which refers to the time varying deviations of a single clock period relative to an ideal clock reference which means um, the period of the clock itself is varying okay the first period of the first cycle period of the clock may be one nanosecond and the next clock period of the clock signal may be 0.8 nanoseconds so it's varying uh, due to the crystal oscillators itself or maybe due to the clock delivery network some something is wrong in between so because of that the clock period is not ideally one nanosecond assume that it was supposed to be one nanosecond and that's what is ideal but it's not stable so for a given spatial location or a point i okay consider a spatial location i because this is considered to be a temporal variation a temporal means uh, with respect to time right in time it varies at a particular location at different times the clock period will be different that's what it means that's why it's called as a temporal variation so t jitter of n nth variation will be uh, at that point i t i of clock n plus one the next clock cycle the time period of next clock cycle uh, the time of next clock cycle minus the time of the previous clock cycle at the same location i minus the ideal clock cycle okay if it is one nanosecond assuming assume that the next clock cycle is uh, 1.2 uh, nanosecond and the previous clock cycle was uh, 0.9 nanosecond so the total difference of the t jitter will be somewhere around uh, 0.9 to 1.2 is 0.3 nanoseconds right the total difference will be 0.3 nanoseconds so jitter uh, is also a, a problem uh, in um, setup and hold violations but this will be considered uh, in, in the later stage both the skew and the jitter are uh, added as d rates to the clock paths itself right so these are very important uh, considerations and uh, without these the chip uh, functionality or uh, timing may not work completely so this is a brief discussion on clock skew and clock jitter that's all for now i'll see you in the next video thanks a lot for watching uh, please do subscribe to my channel bye bye